Remind yourself of what a chromosome is. It's nothing more than one long string of DNA. A chromosome is one molecule of DNA. I call it like, I mean, it's, it's a long, it's a string of DNA. And technically, and this is going to be important to us at some point, the DNA actually winds around special proteins called histone proteins. So the molecule of DNA actually like loops around these histone proteins. It can loop around these proteins and they're like organizing structures. Like they help the DNA um, not get super tangled in the nucleus. Imagine, I mean, there's 46 molecules in almost all of your cells 46 molecules that make up six feet. If you unwound all the DNA, you would have a six foot tall, that's the size of my kids, a six foot tall piece of DNA in one of your cells and you have a hundred trillion cells. Like this is sort of a mind boggling concept of how much DNA is actually found in your nucleus and organized into chromosomes. Thank you, histone proteins, for helping us do this. While we're talking about the histone proteins, we can wind, um, the DNA can wind loosely. Oh my gosh, is that how you spell loosely? Or tightly. And if it is loosely wound, it actually can end up looking like a tangle. The DNA plus the histone protein is called um, chromatin. And so you can have loosely wound chro chromatin or tightly wound chromatin. So we must look at yarn. I, when I have spare time, I like to knit. I don't have a lot of spare time, so I don't do it very often. Do you agree that this, like when you buy a log of yarn, you could unwind this whole log of yarn and it would be one long string. This is tightly wound DNA, tightly wound chromatin. And I don't know, I think of it as if I wound up my DNA, I think of it as looking something like this, and I call it a chromosome. If, ha, this is actually representing a chromosome, say chromosome number one from an egg parent, and chromosome number two, I mean chromosome number one, same chromosome, right? It's the exact same thing, it's just a different color from sperm parent. Do you remember what those were called? The chromosomes that are the same, I didn't draw that very well. That's supposed to be exactly the same. But one's from sperm parent and one's from egg parent. Do you remember what those were called? Those are called homologous chromosomes. I think this is probably maybe review, I can't remember. Do you agree that we could unwind these tightly wound? Tight, tight, tight. Oh loosely wound. This is loosely wound, tangled mess. Look, do you agree that I just drew exactly the same? Oh, I'm not going to draw them. I'm going to draw them so that, and of course I drew them on, whatever. Do you see what I'm doing? Loose, tight, tight, tight. Now, 
my children, who I just said were now six feet tall, when they were not six feet tall and they were cute and little, they took this and they unwound it all and they turned it into this. And if, I mean, I bet now, hmm, this could be an interest. I wonder what I'd have to give them to have them take this and wind it back up. Could they do it? Yes. Would they do it? Highly unlikely. I, when I see the tangle, I call the tangle chromatin. And I call the little logs chromosomes. But inside the tangle are chromosomes. And that's the truth. Like, it's the same thing. It just matters how tightly wound around the histone proteins the DNA is. Okay. Um, I do want you to label. I drew little center bobbles on my chromosomes. And those are important structures that help mm, organize the chromosomes when we get ready to divide them. And that's called the centromere. Homologous chromosomes. Everybody has a centromere. In fact, you can count centromeres to figure out how many chromosomes you have. And then remember that we can actually visualize all these chromosomes in a karyotype. This is what your chromosomes look like. These are human chromosomes. And you can see that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46 chromosomes. This, these chromosomes are in log form. I do have a picture here of the chromosomes in not log form. Hold on a minute, I have to make that go away. You can't see it yet, but there it is. For real. That right there is a microscope image of DNA in tangled chromatin form. Do you see the resemblance? Do you see why? <laughs> I was like, dude. And then, hold on, hold your horses. Can you imagine trying to divide the DNA if it was in that, like, this format? Are you kidding me? Can you imagine like trying to make sure, make a copy of all the DNA and then try to make sure that you get it equally divided? No, honey, that's like not ever gonna work for you. you you'll be much better off if you instead go with this strategy. Put it into a log. It's why it matters. That's why we're paying attention to what our chromosomes are named. Okay, I think I've told you everything that you need to know and I think we're ready to look at the cell cycle because the DNA changes its form. It goes back and forth between loose chromatin form and tight chromatin form, between chromatin, the tangle, and chromosomes, the logs. Let's see if we can figure out when and why it would go back and forth like that.